Welcome to AG Talks, where the guest is the host. I'm Hans Devines, and I'm honored to be here in the office of the Attorney General, with the Attorney General himself. And today, we have the honor of talking all things Tobago. So, you have a neighbor, you have a friend, you yourself, make sure you tune in, turn up your computer, your phone, whatever you're looking at us on, because this one is going to be memorable. I'm not even going to pretend like it's not going to be. It's really going to be memorable. AG, welcome. Well, to my guest who's the host, welcome to AG Talks, where we try to make issues the subject of concern in Trinidad and Tobago. We're stepping away from old talk, mm -hmm. from bacchanal, from personalities, and we're getting down to how do we encourage a better Trinidad and Tobago? What's the vision I, we, you all have yeah. for Trinidad and Tobago, and how do we get there? Yeah, today we're talking Tobago. Tobago, Tobago is big. Tobago is important. Tobago is part of our democracy. So I'm thrilled to have you, roots and all. Yeah, yeah, ready? yeah, yeah, yeah. ready for Tobago. I, I really deeply rooted her. I tell you one time, first woman in THA, that was my grandmother. There you go, Be folks. I bet you didn't know that. And tonight, speaking about women, we have Sham for Kojo, nice. MP for Tobago West, the Minister of Sport, joining us. She's going to be part of our program to give us some on the ground perspectives. She's a champion fighter for Tobago. So I'm really looking forward to this evening, Hans, and I'm in your court. Aye, aye, aye. Well, let's start one time. Big topic. This is what the public is talking about the THA Act. All right. Now, there are two sides to it. Let's be honest. There's the side of Tobagonians who have been saying, hey, this is long overdue. We needed this all the time. And then there are few Trinidadians who also say, hey, how come? What's the need for that? Why Tobago? Why THA need a new act? What happened to the old one? What really going on there? So just break it down for both sides of that coin. Let me start with that big belly rang. Why now? How long? You know that it's 253 years ago that we had our first legislature in Tobago. 253 years ago. Then, fast forward, 1889, Tobago became a ward of Trinidad. It went from having its own island government, it became joined to Trinidad, right. and it therefore became Trinidad and Tobago by an order in council. That was 1889, that's a hundred and 34 years ago, 132 years ago. And since then, Tobago has always felt this desire to return to a degree of autonomy. Why? Because they are an island as well. Mm -hmm. We have a constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. We're a twin island republic. Very importantly, we are an archipelagic state. What does that mean? Our two islands together have a ratio of land and a ratio of water which allows us more economic rights than if we were individual islands. Okay. So they draw a line out in the sea, an imaginary line, in accordance with the international law of the sea, the conventions that exist, and we therefore get basically a ratio of two-thirds to one in terms two, to one-third in terms of our land ratio. Right. So we get more acreage than not. What that means is any discussion about Tobago's autonomy has to include, well, how do we get the best for Tobago and Trinidad? If we were to declare the island of Tobago alone, we lose water acreage. Mm -hmm. We therefore have shrinking borders. Barbados takes our oil and gas. Guyana takes our oil and gas. Suriname takes our oil and gas. Venezuela takes our oil and gas because Trinidad and Tobago's water shrink. Wow. And a lot of people are missing that fact. So this government has said, listen, we've had decades of talk of Tobago's autonomy. Tobago has led the way for us. Yeah. Tobago led the way on a THA Act, which is the best in class for local government structures, much okay. better than our regional corporation structure. That happened in 1980. Then in 1996, we had another version of the THA Act. And the THA Act is a corporate body mm -hmm. by statute. It's like a company created by statute. Right. So the THA has a corporate secretary, it has a chief secretary, it has a sec secretaries, it has assemblymen, but they run like a company. I'm putting it in the very simplest version yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah. What we're saying to Tobago is, listen, you see where Tobago is a ward of Trinidad, and you see where Tobago is run effectively by a corporate entity, which is the THA? Mm -hmm. Let us instead move to Tobago having its own parliamentary structure, right. Tobago having its own cabinet type structure, 
Tobago having equality in many senses is what a prime minister would have, the, the obligation of the president to talk to the, to the chief secretary, mm -hmm. the ability to pass laws in the same way Trinidad and Tobago does as a parliament, but with certain safeguards to make sure we don't have collisions of laws. Right. And let us remove the body corporate. Let's vest all lands in the equivalent of a minister of finance, corporation sold. Right. Let Tobago have its own version of its attorney general. And what we are saying to Tobago is, we've had literally 26 years of discussion, mm -hmm. literally. In 2012, there was a green paper created. There was model legislation that was created. Shamfa Kujo will talk to us tonight about how we had the consultations and structures that went into Tobago. I was a part of that joint select committee. But what we have for Tobago now, very simple terms, one, put away the company structure. Okay. Move to an island government structure. Have elected officials, have the equivalent of senators, appointed people, including independent senator types All right. in that body. Make laws for Tobago. Have exclusive administrative authority for Tobago. Amend the constitution to include a service commission expansion so that Tobago gets its own focus on service commissions. Right. Amend the constitution so that Tobago gets the equivalent of a attorney general, of a chief secretary that's protected, the power to make law, of a cabinet type structure, mm -hmm. make the president talk to the chief secretary the way the president does to a prime minister. Put all of that on. All of that is in the parliament now. It's split into two bills. Right. We're at committee stage. One is to amend the constitution. Why amend the constitution? Power to make law is in, in the Constitution in Section 53. Mm -hmm. Talking to the President is in Section 80 and Section 81. Having a Cabinet is in Section 75. Service Commission, Section 121, 124, 129 of the Constitution. The Tobago House of Assemblies, four little minute clauses that are not protected from change, Section 141. Okay. We want to amend all of those things. We want to deepen the entrenchment. And then the stuff that is how you make it work, put into a se separate bill. And very importantly, when we get a little bit later to your next set of questions, the power to manage your land, the power to manage your marine resources, this is what Tobago has asked for, and this is what the Joint Select Committee produced, right. and this is the work that we have on deck. So that's it in a nutshell. Thanks for allowing me that space. <laughs> All right, so we're talking more things for Tobago in terms of the laws, Chief Secretary protected, all of these different things. But how does that translate to the average Tobagonian? So, the average Tobagonian, and I say this with the greatest of respect, having learned from my brothers and sisters, and when Shamford joins us, she'll speak there. The average Tobagonian wants to know, listen, they have a fair share of the economy. Because mm -hmm. part of the law is that they get, it's actually $1.2 billion extra per year by having a minimum of 6.8 to 6.9% of the national budget. Right. The average Tobagonian says, look, we want the power to make our law and have our administration so that we will spend our money the way we think we should, not the way some office in central government tells you you should. Right. So for the average Tobagonian, this represents a chance to lead the way. For the average Tobagonian, land title is a big issue. People want to own their land. They know their ancestors have been there for generations, but they don't have proper deed title mm -hmm. because the title is being worked out. But they want to do it faster this law allows them to have that administrative control. So I'm saying respectfully to Tobago, as one of the authors of this particular law, as the Attorney General who crafted the law for the committee, this is good law. The point is, it requires two-thirds of the parliament and three-quarters of the parliament. That is up to nine people more than the PNM has. You need nine people in the UNC or the opposition mm -hmm. to vote for the law because the law can't pass without it. Oh, And that is, if you want to have the power to make law, if you want modification of your service commissions, if you want the entrenchment, meaning the protection of the laws that we're creating, you need to get more than just the government support. You have to have opposition support in the House of Representatives. So what happens if the support is not there? Well, we can only pass what we can. Mm -hmm. We have only been given 22 seats in the government in the government's turn at the wheel for the elections. So we can only advance what we can. This is why we are in the committee stage of the parliament right now. 
we receive submissions coming from Mr. Ho Choi Charles and Mr. Fali Augustine together. Mm -hmm. There was nobody forward to present their version of amendments. So I took the amendments that they presented, translated it into legalese, and laid it on the parliament floor so that we can consider it at committee stage. The committee stage has been paused. The parliament is on a recess right now. We've received three more submissions from stakeholders, right. which really aren't very different from that which we've received already. What we want is the opportunity to discuss that on the floor of the parliament. In the meanwhile, the question to my brothers and sisters in Tobago is where are we going? Mm -hmm. When is it going to be enough? Today's discussion, tonight's discussion, asking Shamfa to come on with us is to reach out into Tobago and to say to Tobago, what is the version of what you want? When will 253 years be too long? Okay, but then, then there's a question that, that comes up that people would ask. Is it that Tobago is really getting the best or just the best that you can offer at this point in time? Well, it's, it's a mix of not what we can offer, but what's best for Trinidad and Tobago. Right. So when you hear some uh, people say, look, let's have a Bill of Rights. We have a Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. It's the Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, the preamble, Section 4, Section 5, where you have enshrined rights, right. right? Due process, freedom of speech, freedom of movement. We have that. Why reinvent that? That's for all the people of Trinidad and Tobago. That's in common in Trinidad. That's in common in Tobago. There's equality of status. Right. When I say what's best, I'm hearing Mr. Watson Duke say he wants a federa federation. He wants succession. Secession, <laughs> Emmy. I wish there was succession. He wants secession. He wants Tobago to leave Trinidad. Mm. If Tobago leaves Trinidad, its waters shrink. We both lose. Both, we both, both lose, lose because the archipelagic laws go away. Territorial Sea Act, all of those things. So when you translate what... Let's talk about the issues. Forget the persons. I respect the democracy of this country where people can speak up. But to Tobago, to Trinidad, do you want to give up waters? Yeah. Do you want to give up oil and gas mining rights in our waters because somebody has said, let's leave? Do we want to break the unitary state, the equality of state in Trinidad and Tobago? No. This law says, let's have equality. But this is really a law which is, in my opinion, an advantage to Tobago because all Tobagonians get the benefit of the laws of Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. and Tobago now. So there's a double Tobago in, in, in some senses. Okay, so we have a question on Facebook from Melissa. She wants to know, will Tobago have to rely on Trinidad for anything if the autonomy is given? Tobago will continue to rely on the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Amen. The same way the island of Trinidad will rely upon the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So we have one consolidated fund where all taxes and revenue, etc. go. And from that, Tobago will receive a minimum of 6.9% of the annual budget. Mm -hmm. But Tobago also, under these laws, has the power to raise certain levies, taxes, etc., and generate its own monies. Yeah. So just like San Fernando West will have to rely upon the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Let me put this into context. If you take San Fernando East and San Fernando West, that's the population of Tobago. And there's a thing that we need to say too here. There's no country called Trinidad. There's no country called Tobago. No. There, however, there's a country called Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. And with that said... Let's just ease up a little bit here. Now, in terms of Tobago, what's your favorite beach in Tobago? I confess this is going to sound corny. I still love my Pigeon Point because it's so calming. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. I, I, I confess that that is a favorite. And we know the restaurant's open tomorrow. Curbside pickup and so on. Have your list ready? Um, You're checking off all the um, bells? <laughs> um, I, I st I'm still trying to figure out where I'll go first. You know, many options. But if... You were to be going to Tobago tomorrow. I don't know if you're going to Tobago tomorrow. But if you were to be going to Tobago tomorrow, where would be the place in Tobago that you're looking to get something to eat? I haven't had a vacation in three and a half years going on for, wow. to be frank with you. It's literally been work every single day. And I was honestly looking forward to going to Tobago. Not so much for the food, not so much for anything. But when you land in Tobago, you mm -hmm. feel a sense of release. You feel a sense of breath of fresh air. And just the chance to get into that water quietly right. your own caribbean water that's <laughs> what i was looking forward to what about old time wedding you ever been to the tobago old time wedding i have not been to an old time wedding i'd love to i've seen the imagery of it right the, the truth is hans 
members of government really don't get a chance to get out a lot other than in the constituency and at work. So yeah. I spend as much time, a lot of people in San Fernando West, like the rest of the country, are going through some very hard times. I just left doing public releases and, and, and notices for the Minister of National Security put out. We had new regulations to do. We've been working all day long. The Prime Minister's been on the phone. We're on constant call. Not that we need a violin to pull out now, <laughs> but the point is, this is a constant job. Yeah, yeah. So Tobago is going to be that little getaway, and I was really looking forward to it, and still am. All right, so you're looking forward to the getaway in Tobago. What are three things that you've never done in Tobago you want to do? I'd like to... I'd probably like to go diving in Tobago. I haven't been diving in Tobago. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I'd like to put on a tank and get down and get the seclusion and release of being under the water. All right, all right. Um, I'd like to hit an old time wedding. Uh, wedding. Yeah, that would be yeah. awesome. Um, and I think the third thing that I'd like to do is to just go and lime somewhere on a corner, boy. Get the, ah, okay. Get, get the points of view of somewhere i mean maybe it'll be up in roxborough or charlotteville or or somewhere that will have me tobago i'm asking for an invitation please um where i could just see what tobago people are like yeah and i'd like to take a few san fernandians with me yeah. so that at least i could be with my people too so you're you're one of those people that actually likes to go into areas and experience the real people not just the people who say all right the ag come in I, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen me at work in the constituency. I am most comfortable with a clipboard sitting down on the edge of a drain, listening to what somebody has to say to me. That's where I feel a sense of release because that's not where it's somebody blowing at you, hot air, water hitting your face. Is different. It's real people's issues, yeah. and you feel us. That's where you get a recharge. You know, you get a recharge from your constituency. And I want to say a big shout out to all the fighters. Who have been pulling i mean balancing so many things in our in our constituency from hamper giving from feeding people from looking after children encouraging people to go out and get vaccinated we need to reclaim our country we need to get vaccinated mm -hmm. and i'm making a plea right now to everybody tobago lead the way san fernando we right there with you come out and get vaccinated all right well you said we want to touch base with the people so let's touch base with the member of parliament and Minister of Sport and Community Development, the Honorable Shampo Kojo is joining us right now via Zoom. the Zoom hey. link. Hey, and we also have the Chief Secretary here in waiting. Hi, Hi Sham. Ansel Dennis. What? We have a big lineup here. Shampo, do you ever look bad? <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. I'm following any of the steps by this. Welcome to AG Talks, Shamfa Kujo and team. We are so proud to have Tobago West in the house. We're hosting this event to try and get Trinidad and Tobago, or let me reverse that, Tobago and Trinidad into your space. Here's part of your position. Tell us, Shamfa, why do you think we need to support legislative reform of the type that you have worked on for two parliamentary sessions so far? Thank you uh, very much for having me. Thank you all of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Faris, we have worked so long and hard on this uh, journey, and this journey goes all the way back to about 2006 when uh, the motion was first made in Tobago House of Assembly, and even before that, when Robinson made uh, the motion in Parliament in 1977. But this most recent uh, journey that has uh, come down to these bills that are before us, started with a motion that was uh, laid by the then opposition in 2006 when Ashwood Chapel that made a motion asking the House of Assembly to seriously take on board this matter of internal self government and to uh, there, there are consider going throughout Tobago in a very organized fashion. And I'm happy that Mr. Orbe London, who was Chief Secretary at the time, decided to take on an opposition motion and to lead the charge to champion this whole movement and to run with it so that we can keep the topic alive and most importantly team up with Coach Roy Charles and other leaders in Tobago to, to, to embark on a non-political approach. We wanted to speak to uh, the nation with one Tobago voice, no matter what side of the divide you came from, no matter which political party you represent, your economic status, 
We just wanted it to be a perspective to get out there. So I'm really pleased because I had been a part of the consultations. I remember going to the consultation in August in 2009 with the conference room in Chopa. And I followed the debates and the consultations throughout the years, even when the committee came to Trinidad, uh, when John Prince submitted his first uh, report in September 2nd, 2011. He had already done 42 consultations and three larger conferences, and that was John Prince's report. And from there on, then in 2013, when Mr. Hojoy Charles and Mr. Orville London, then Chief Secretary, joined up to say, hey, let's spread this thing further while I get all the views of Tobago and So, so Sharp, if, 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 if I could ask a question, you're clearly mapping out a deep consultative process. As yes. the MP for Tobago West, what are four takeaways that your constituents, in your view, whether they support you or don't support you, why should Tobago West in four heads want this law? What's in it for Tobago? What's in it for Tobago? I think we need to first look at what did we ask for in 2016? What was presented to the Joint Select Committee in 2018? And there are some very basic principles that we said are non-negotiable. I think that the basic principles exist within the legislation that's before us. And that's speaking to Tobago no longer being a ward of Trinidad, having uh, or lawmaking powers in a wide number of areas, increased executive power, removing that uh, overarching uh, power of the cabinet. So we are not, we, this legislation is proposing that we are now fully responsible for the executive the executive of the Tobago House of Assembly of the Tobago Island government is not fully responsible responsible for the direction of Tobago and all development to create our systems and our own policies. And in layman terms for me, this process and these bills allow us to customize our development. So the government of Trinidad and Tobago, the parliament of Trinidad and Tobago makes general law. But for us, we are saying we have our own culture, our own way of doing things. We have our own development agenda, our own vision and aspirations for our people, as we say, self-determination. So this allows us to uh, um, customize our development and to develop systems and policies and programs that suit all people and all time and all circumstances. So I think that this is really, really important uh, to us, allowing to the Onions to have a greater say in our development and to influence the development making process right at home in Tobago through all leaders. So, so what's stopping there. what's stopping Tobagoans from doing this? What what in your view is the sticking point? Because we know in Parliament, you were there with me, we were there together. We have 22 votes. Let's put the parliament aside for a moment. Where is the ground cry from Tobago to say, hey, we want our own laws. We want our structures. We've had enough consultation. What more do you think needs to be done? I think um, what we have been doing is trying to, to educate or enlighten Tobagonians about the legislation. But you have a lot of people who haven't read the bills and uh, are not fully informed as to the content of the bill. So I think more conversations like these and encouraging people to actually go and read the report. You don't have to read the full 749 pages. I think that the committee has summarized in 25 pages uh, what this thing is really about and the different positions that supported the, the, the different perspectives taken, not just by the committee, but see legal luminaries and everybody yeah. who helped us draft in this legislation so and, and what i found is the more people are enlightened and the more people receive explanations as to what is actually in the legislation and know for themselves you have more people coming on board and say hey i now understand yeah. i support this thing you see if you sit back and you listen to the uh political ranting and raving and the the, the positioning and the posturing uh, of some politicians, you're going to get lost in the free and you're going to lose on this one. Please indeed, indeed, Shamfer. Information is definitely key. But That's for right. the people out there that don't know where to access the information, where's the information? 
Well, Shamfa, you'll agree with me that there are bullet points. We have the laws up on the Parliament website. Quick right. fun fact. Right now, if Tobago got the 6.9%, right now, right. there'd be $1.2 billion extra for Tobago. One, $1,200 million extra. Divided among 60,000 people, that's $20,000 in project works per head that could mm -hmm. happen in Tobago right now. So the answer is in Parliament. Shamfa's office, Ayana's office, right. um, those sorts of structures are, are in, in there. Sh Sh Shamfa, what, what do you feel are the issues that Tobago wants to have dealt with now? How can Tobago move this forward? I, I, get, I get a sense and I get a feeling that our brothers and sisters in Tobago want to be rescued out of a situation. The charge towards that rescue. Do you feel that charge? Are you seeing it? Uh, how, how is your interaction and your constituency running on this area? In my constituency, for me, it has been about uh, education and having town hall meetings and getting people on board and you see people coming alive and, and really uh, uh, listening and supporting. I think what strikes home is when you get to lay in and you say exactly what this means. For instance, we don't have touting legislation in Tobago. You hear people talk about we go down to Storby and we set young fellas bothering us and we want a proper system where they can buy their little tickets and get on the boat ride and so on. These laws, this, this bill allow us to create laws to treat with issues like that. We want to provide more scholarships through increased allocation and, and through more focused policy to provide opportunities for young people to go out there and study. We want to do labor legislation and policies so that uh, you have more opportunities for young people to be employed. These legislation, or the opportunities in this legislation allow us to do so. So being for now could create more specific policies to say, okay, if somebody is coming all the way extending a contract to somebody who's older than 70 or so, then they must train a young person who has a certain number of years left in public service. And that's just an example as to how we can now use the lawmaking powers before us to find tune and to zone in as it relates to the issues that affect us. You have people who have uh, garages. And when they finish fixing cars or they've gotten a car that cannot be fixed, they just leave it at the side of the road. Now, these uh, lawmaking powers on the schedule, too, that allows us to make legislation that treats with littering, recycling, and could cause us to say, Honestly, okay, you will be but... fine for you leaving that day. And it's like getting into the fine issues and showing how we can utilize this lawmaking power and the opportunities of this legislation to treat with all issues that we experience. Oh. Minister Kojo, we see you ready to lead the charge. We see you ready to lead the charge. We see a passion in there. We know that it will make a big difference for you as an individual, what it means for you and the love that you have for Tobago. And you're leading the charge. But right now, let's talk to the man in charge of the Tobago House of Assembly right now. We welcome Chief Secretary Ansel Dennis. Welcome. The one and only, the rock yes. star from Tobago. Listen, Listen, how does Tobago have so many rock stars? You have Shamfa, you have Ansel Dennis, you have Joel Chan, you have just just Ayanna Webster-Roy. It's like unfair. So Ansel Dennis, Chief Secretary, welcome to AG Talks. We are here at your service, all things Tobago, and we want to hear from you, good sir, as the champion of the cause that you're leading. What is it for you? What You have a platform here tonight talking to Tobago and to Trinidad. Tell us your position, what you want to see, and let me know as Attorney General how I can do more to lend a hand to the cause of the people of Tobago. Good evening, sir. How are you? Very well. Loving the shirt there, Ansel Dennis. I, I like the I love Buku sign behind. That's what that's what I, I feel. It. Indeed. Uh, let me say good evening as well to Member of Parliament for Tobago West, Honorable Shampa Kojo. And of course, uh, hands as well. Good evening to you, sir, and to all the listeners and viewers across Trinidad and Tobago, and maybe across other parts of the world as well. It's a pleasure to be here, right? So, of course, the discussion is on Tobago. Internal self-government uh, is the issue at hand. How does Tobago come to a place of getting more autonomy, which simply means more power to govern our affairs, to manage our affairs? at this point in time. And Attorney General, you would know that, of course, the national parliament 
is quite busy and quite occupied treating with national issues. Actually, over the last five years, um, you all have engaged in a number of very important and critical pieces of legislation, whether it was explain your wealth, um, bail amendment, and a number of other legislations came before the parliament to treat with crime and other national issues. And of course, in a situation like that, uh, where the parliament, the national parliament being focused on national issues, uh, legislation or law making for to be, of course, has been on the back burner. And the question is, how do we treat with those issues concerning Tobago and the people of Tobago that requires legislation? And I'm going to use one example. A very obvious example is the tourism sector. One of the biggest challenges we have with the tourism sector is the lack of regulation, right, in terms of laws and uh, legislation in place to ensure that we adhere to certain standards in the tourism sector. Attorney General, you would know that back in November, the Tobago House of Assembly attempted to treat with the regulation of the Boko Marine Park, where we have a number of issues in terms of safety concerns, in terms of standards, and of course, the quality of the overall product. So we undertook a process. It took us maybe three or four months or so to come up with uh, our legislation as provided for in the current Tobago House of Assembly Act 40 of 1996. But well, guess what? We had to debate that in the Tobago House of Assembly, approve it and send it on to the cabinet. And then of course, the cabinet had the responsibility to determine if from there, it would go to the parliament to be debated and approved. Right. Only then would it have become Tobago law. So what? this new legislation, this new approach, of course, establishes a Tobago legislature where the Tobago House of Assembly, uh, in conjunction with the president, will form this legislature that could make laws for Tobago, right? Of course, we will debate bills, pass them, and once the president ascends, then it becomes law without the involvement of the cabinet, without the involvement of the national parliament, which, as I said before, is quite busy and occupied treating with national issues. Chief Secretary, I asked the AG a question earlier, and I want to ask you the same question, but in a more specific way. So, for example, right, Minister Kojo's schoolmate, Alex Ned from Waterholics. Right. What does this really mean for him? How does he benefit from this change? Because you spoke a little bit about tourism there, but how does he benefit from it all? Right, so... An improved tourism sector is going to benefit the island generally, the country, of course, and even specifically those persons operating in the tourism sector. Tobago will become more competitive. Tobago's tourism product will improve significantly if, in fact, we can bring legislation that will regulate the industry. And I, and I want to be more specific. Regulation will mean, of course, our hotels, guest houses, restaurants, villas must adhere to specific standards in terms of safety, in terms of quality. And, and if we look at competing destinations, such as Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia, all of them have these regulations in place where the law requires that all those tourism facilities and even tour operators, they must be registered and they must adhere to certain standards. Now, Alex Ned, of course, operates in the Pigeon Point area. And I'm sure he can tell you some of the chaos that, that happens there from time to time. Of course, over the last few months, when we were opened um, recently during the pandemic, we made some attempts to bring uh, new policies that would have allowed for a, a greater level of law and order in that area. And I'm sure Mr. Ned could tell you that as a result of that, some of his customers would have felt a sense of greater safety they, they would have benefited from uh, a greater level of customer service right. as a result of some of those policy initiatives, which are not even legislation. Chief Secretary, so imagine Chief if we could get to the place of bringing that in the form of legislation where it becomes a legal requirement for right. to operators and other persons operating in the tourism sector to adhere to certain standards at this point in time. Chief, you, you're, you're an elected politician, as is Shamfa in Tobago. You're the chief secretary. 
you face down others in Tobago who are elected people democratically, so there's six others. How do you translate to the people of Tobago what the truth is? Because Hans and I were having a discussion before they started the show um, about why we're doing the show, about getting into people's spaces and minds, and we were saying it's about getting to the issues and the truth. And then Hans said to me quite truly, he said, you mean your version of the truth? So let me ask you this question. When you are witness to a version of the truth that other people in Tobago are speaking, how do you speak to Tobagonians to explain to them the difference between secession, the difference between legislative making? How do you feel about we need more time to talk? Because that's a big conversation. Tell me about how you answer your opponents, your critics. It's open to both you and to Shampa. How do you speak to your political opponents? And what does it mean? And how much more time do we have to engage in this exercise? When will it end? Well, I've said to my opponents, if you want to call them that, but for the purpose of this exercise, I will say fellow to be unions. I've said to them that there's a need for us to be uh, united, not necessarily uniform, because I've said time and time again that we will never agree on what is best for Tobago. Who choice, who choice Charles's version of what is best for Tobago will not be the same as mine or, or Farley Augustin, or even Watson Duke. Watson Duke, as a matter of fact, thinks that independence and secession is the best thing for Tobago at this point in time. So we will never agree on that. But I think at least as leaders, we can agree that this bill presents an opportunity for Tobago to go further, to move beyond Act 40 of 1996. And of course, under those circumstances, we can develop the island in a way that we have never been able to do before. So, so I would have expected that persons will put aside their, their personal ambitions, their personal opinions, and personal beliefs of what Tobago should look like in the future, and, and really rally behind this process. That, as Minister Kodjo would have hinted to, started since 2006, this latest push. Right, and I was around in 2013 when all the political parties came together, they sat around the table, they put aside their different views and their different wishes and aspirations, and they came up with a proposal that represented the, the general views and the thinking of Tobagonians at this point in time. So essentially, and, and it's quite difficult, it's quite difficult to really get the truth out because you have a number of persons saying different things, people in the middle of this thing talking secession, some saying reject the bills, people saying all sorts of different things. And guess what? I am quite disappointed by that because I believe it allowed a situation where certain people in the parliament could have used that as an excuse to say to the parliament and to say to the country that, look, to be very ready for this internal yeah. self-government okay. to be unions not on the same page they need to spend some more time talking because apparently um the, the, the seven or so years that we have and it's more than that but the latest push which began in in, in 2006 there about and then you had the united effort beginning in 2013 means that we have spent the last seven eight years discussing this issue right and if persons are prepared to say to me and to say to the people of tobago that look we need to consult some more. Then the question I will have is, if not now, when? So, so essentially, I'm quite disappointed. So essentially, it's time to start that, moving on it. Okay, Mr. Think, Kojo, come in. I think in addition to that, we have to be mindful, open and honest about what we were asked to do. We were not asked to create a federal system. We were not asked either to um, develop legislation that speaks to secession or even hinted at secession. The mandate was to maintain the unitary state that was stated to us clearly in 2016. And the consultations held by the committee over the years when we came to Tobago, nowhere along that line was this federalism or secession matter introduced. And I find it quite unfair that the members of the PDP and those opposing voices who had the opportunity to be a part of the consultations and the conversations and to throw in their positions and perspectives over the years, did not take the opportunity to do so. They didn't do so in 2017 when they assumed duties in the assembly. 
2015 when they first entered the race for the general election. We came in 2018, Carly Augustine was at consultations representing the PDP. He didn't take the opportunity to respond to our calls for comments. We reached out to Watson Duke, who also did not respond to um, our calls for comments on behalf of the PDP, but the PSA responded. And then 2019 and 2020, nothing. The PDP and many of these opposing voices did not choose to say a thing until the last month of the committee's life. You know, so it's quite unfair to come at this 11th hour and to try to introduce these new positions and take advantage of Tobagoians or to railroad uh, the process. And, and, and he said this in the beginning. He said, uh, what we had sent to the cabinet in 2016 was a document containing our dreams or aspirations, what we said we wanted. We know it wasn't a perfect document. And it is responsibility, your responsibility is to put it in legalese. You would not get exactly what you said. And then we look at the, the, the remarks and the advice of the legal luminaries and, and so on. So we have come back to Tobago saying, this is what we've come up with. This is opposition which holds all the principles that you would have uh, you would have requested in the best place, in the best way possible. Is that me or woman saying, if a man or somebody owes me a thousand dollars or has a thousand dollars for me, and he comes to me and he say, I have 700, I'm good. And we continue to work to get the other three. Take my 700 dollars. So let me ask you this, Sham Fakuju. Ansel Dennis, two young stars in Tobago for the people. So I, I'm, I'm getting this hands and I both, you're for Tobago, you want consultation to be proper, but you also want to get on with the business. How do you talk to the, I, I do something every time I meet young people. I never assume that they know who I necessarily am or what I necessarily do. And then I ask a few questions as to, certain things in life, you know, do you know the head of this or who's the minister of that or what this organization does? And I found that in a number of places in the age group 16 or 18 to 35, a lot of people are unplugged because they think that politicians are just a lot of noise and just fighting with each other. How do you think the next steps ought to work in telling brothers and sisters in Tobago and in Trinidad, listen, this is what we stand for, especially the youth. What's, what's the game plan with respect to the youth in Tobago and getting that echo inside of there so that people get 10 walkaway points? To me, it's about speaking about how it affects your day-to-day -day lives. I've met so many young people who want to open a bar or want to do some sort of business. And we still have to depend on uh, this committee um, that's appointed by the cabinet for liquor licenses. And now these legislations allow us to handle that kind of business in Tobago. You have, we talk about customer service and in, in improving consumer relations and consumer protection. You go out there and you purchase something and they say, say no return, no exchange. This legislation allows us in Tobago to handle those issues on our own and develop our, 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 our work, our agenda in the best way that we see fit to, to treat it or the issues in any, in any area. We talk about young people needing experience before they get a job. We have to create our own legislation and our own systems where during the July, August period, we team up with private sector, with hotels and so on in Tobago to do tech work, uh, courses and give them internships and so on where they pay 50% and the Tobago House of Assembly of Tobago Island government pays 50% of the, the salaries to these young people. There are so many possibilities yeah. in the ability to create your own legislation and opportunities and programs coming out of this piece of legislation before. So it's about speaking to those opportunities that affect our day-to-day -day life. So we're seeing possibilities and opportunities all around in terms of this particular act. But I want to ask a little serious question here to the Chief Secretary, Paris Harari, Attorney General, Shamfo Kojo, Member of Parliament. They come in your way. They come in Tabuku. Where you carrying them to eat? Or what you cooking for them? Which one? Which one? <laughs> Which, one? Which one? Which one? Which direction? Well, well um, 
there are, there are several options. Though. I didn't hear you clearly, but I think you said that the AG and the member of parliament coming to Buku. Yes. Yeah. Where I'll cook for them or where I'll take them to eat. Which one? Um, there, there are several options. I, I will attempt to make them breakfast, pancakes and eggs. Um, for lunch, I will take them to Lavinia's and I will ask them to specifically do some conks and, and dumpling, um, maybe with some provisions, AG, blue food is, is very good for you. <laughs> it, um, shall, into shall. healthy lifestyle and strength, so right there on the blue food yeah, platform, definitely. have no fear. Definitely. <laughs> Um, and, and then for dinner, I may take them out of the village of Buku and we'll go to probably Seahorse in one of the, the, the top restaurants on the island. But apart from that, apart from all the food, there's a lot of other activities to do um, in the Buku area. There's the Nylon Pool. Um, I heard the AG says that he wants to attempt a dive. Yeah, I hope yeah. he's at least trained and has some kind of experience in diving i need a little party research I, 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 I but I, I, hopefully my kids will teach me right <laughs> yeah because if you don't we'll have to set up a snorkeling yeah right but that could work as well at least you'll see some coral some parrot fish and, and those sort of things and of course you have to get um down into the lagoon late at night um around 8 9 pm get on a kayak but it's only available at a certain time in the month. It depends on the moon, and you have to take that bioluminescence tour. Oh wow! That sounds that effect. sounds that sounds awesome. I've um I, I'm gonna hold it. That I'm scratching <laughs> one of the three hands that I asked me yeah, about, yeah, and yeah. I'm adding that bioluminescence chamfer all the years and the years. You, you <laughs> never told me about that. You're holding back on me. What happened, <laughs> Chief Secretary? <laughs> thank you. You're my friend. AG, I have a better menu than Chief Secretary. I'm not making your pancake. <laughs> I am waiting on uh, coconut, bacon, salt fish. Oh. Getting coconut, bacon, salt fish with chocolate tea. I'm talking about real chocolate tea where you grate the, the chocolate. Oh, and uh, you couple that it really to that. At lunchtime, though, I'm taking you to Daniel's Theot in Black Rock, Frontline Theme Flavors. She does a good uh, curry fish. I know you how you love curry. She does this Creole style curry fish with provisions and all types of different items, showing you that real uh, Tobago flavor. If you're looking for uh, something else, you can try Jira things that shut up that they're also coming out of Black Rock. And if you're into wings and that type of thing, I will give to you Shanish George of Peckish. Oh, that's you, see that? you see that? You see that? All right. That's the big yeah, one. Yeah, I yeah, think we just went, yeah. folks. I want to say that's that the big I, I feel so privileged that I got to write those regulations at the prime minister's instructions to ensure that food, curbside pickup, everything was available tomorrow. But Chief Secretary Shanfa Kojo, let me ask you this: We want to get back to business. COVID has been rough. As members of Parliament that are elected, we know. All members of the THA who are elected, we know what it is to treat with people who are in very difficult circumstances. How is the vaccination drive going in Tobago? Are people coming out? Is there something more that we can do? What's your temperature on that? Because, I mean, after hearing that checklist of food, hands, we are yeah, on board. Yeah, we're ready, we ready to bioluminescence. get back. We headed out there on the kayak at night. How do we get people back into gear when we know the key is vaccinations? Tell us yes. what's going on. So vaccination, as you said, is key. It's, it's our main defense against COVID-19, um, apart from the washing of the hands, etc. Um, so far in Tobago, I think we have had uh, just over 10,000 persons um, getting their first shot, and over 8,000, just over 8,000 of those persons have had their second shot, uh, meaning that they are almost fully vaccinated. I think there is a period of time after the second shot before you, you get the, the highest level of protection. Um, my challenge though is that among the healthcare workers, there seems to be some challenge with, with the vaccination. The rate among healthcare workers is only 53%. There is some reluctance among the healthcare workers. And um, I, I think it's important for us to, you know, be able to, to push that sector towards a greater level of acceptance. 
So we, we must continue to do what we, we must. I will continue to encourage persons to, to get vaccinated. We are also ramping up the, the, the public um, the, the public output as well in terms of putting out as much accurate information as possible into the public domain here in Tobago. Yeah. Because there is a lot of misinformation going about in terms of the, the vaccines containing um, chips, the vaccine being the oh, mark yeah. of the beast, yeah. and all sorts of nonsense um, out there. So we, we must continue to communicate and, and try to convince. I, I do expect to be able to convince every single person, but we have to convince as many persons as possible that, that the vaccine is really the way to us returning to some level of normalcy. It's right. the way for us to live with the virus at this point in Well, we thank you all so much for your time, Chief Secretary, and of course, Member of Parliament, Sham Fakoja. We thank you all so much for being with us here inside AG Talks. And listen, we can't wait to come across the Buko and to Tobago West in general and enjoy all the great things that you all have put on the table for us. All right. So thank you all. Um, have a safe night and be blessed. All right. Now, AG. Um, thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate you being on with us. We're going to talk a little bit more about a few things you're going to be interested in. Um, in your hands, my yeah. host. Now, here's the deal, AG. All right. We know the Tobago House of Assembly, there was a recent election. What does the bill mean for the next Tobago House of Assembly election? Well, the Tobago House of Assembly has not yet moved into full constitution. Right. We have assemblymen that have been sworn in. The problem is that the election of a presiding officer has not happened. And therefore, those persons who were still functioning as secretaries under the THA Act are still functioning in the old regime. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Yeah. I mean, their cycle is four years and we're well into that system right now. So these bills that were in the Joint Select Committee provided a perfect opportunity for Tobago to receive its full package. And this is something that I leave entirely in the hands of Tobago and the Prime Minister right. because... Really, Tobago has had a long time. We're headed up to our budget very shortly. Tobago's budget is part of the budget of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So these are serious issues for Tobago. But I, I want to steal the opportunity to raise a very serious issue for Tobago, which is part and parcel of its reform and its bettering of life. And this is something that the Chief Secretary has been pushing very hard both members of parliament, Shamfa Kujo and Ayana um, Webster Roy, have been pushing really hard. And that is the issue of ease of doing business in Tobago. I have great news for the people of Tobago and for Trinidad. Our company's registry right. is about to go 100% electronic. We're already there electronic. We can do payments electronically. But we're now about to go into the point. We have 120,000 companies registered in Trinidad and Tobago. Imagine never having to set foot physically into the registry's office in Tobago or in Trinidad. Our land registry and land title for Tobago is such a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Our land registry, we've tested it. We are the first ministry in the Caribbean to be online with land registration the way we have. We're so the first ministry in the Caribbean to be online with payments. We are at the cusp of ensuring that the title to land in Tobago. I see the direction you're going, but is this is this government's plan to move into that digitalization? Yes, it is. It's all part of our digitization. It's part of follow the money. It's part of ease of doing business. It's part of making sure that your land tenure and land ownership is easy. We think it unacceptable mm -hmm. for somebody who's lived on land for a generation of 100 years, two generations back to back, right. to have no title to their land they can't go to the bank, can't get a mortgage because their title is not in order. And that Registration of Title to Land Act starts in Tobago. What we had in the Tobago reform legislation that is in the parliament now, we'd love to do it there. We have an alternative to treat with it in the Registration of Title to Land Act, but two big issues. Never having to walk into the registry ever mm -hmm. again in your life to drop off or handle a physical document for companies or for land, and already you know that goes on to births and deaths, etc. 
which you can just order online. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That's something that over the years I've heard family members talk about. The fact that, you know, you're in Tobago and you have to come to Trinidad to do so many different things. So let us understand the direction some more because it's already started elaborating on it. So this means, the ministry of this means the solving the need to come to Trinidad, quote unquote, to do something. This means getting permanent land titles sorted out, meaning it's once and for all yours. Right. And what we have is uh, an IDB loan that we have operationalized. We have passed the law. We've digitized the registry. The access portals come on. So what we're going to do is we're going to declare Tobago under an order where all land title will come under a new system. Mm -hmm. This new system actually was brought into law in the year 2000. Eh? Right. It's just that nobody did anything with it. So we've operationalized that, done the background processing for it, so we could turn it on right. in a full kind of system. Like a machine. But to turn it on, we needed to digitize millions of records, which we have done already. We needed to put in new software, new hardware. We needed to test it. We needed to register lawyers. So we spent a couple of years doing that. But as that switch goes on, it just goes live. Yeah. And when it goes live, it's big news and big salvation for Tobago. So I'm saying to our brothers and sisters in Tobago in particular, your companies, your businesses, your access to NIS, health to charge, all of these things springboard from making sure that you've got your registration correct. And when you look at the fact that a lot of people were denied benefits under the COVID relief because they were not NIS or health, um, registered, right. this now takes us into a safer place because we have to learn lessons coming out of COVID. Mm -hmm. And that's the critical point. But I want to ask my host a question. As a man that is involved in the industry that you're in. Entertainment, yeah. Entertainment. You're known for what you do. You're feeling the vibe coming at you. Um, so here's the thing with me. Eh? I honestly think we have suffered the most in terms of the industry. If we talk about any industry that has suffered the most, a lot of people would say it is entertainment. Um, there are other people that have suffered more based on their income and the, what their lower income the challenges that come with that so losing if you're in a lower income bracket and you lose that income there's more significant than somebody who are, is at a high income bracket and loses their income it's less the the impact is less but people in entertainment have felt it um, so i want to throw that challenge then to the entertainers to the promoters who, who are the essence of trinidad and tobago you're the guys that produce the joy music that i listen to when i'm training <laughs> When, yeah, we yeah, fed, when we're having a fete, when we're having a good time, step out yeah. and vibes up the people to come out and get vaccinated so we could reclaim our country. No, and, and that's the thing, AG. A lot of the entertainers have come forward and they've made their voices heard. There's also, obviously, people saying, you know, it's people's personal choice. So you have different views. Um, People are trying to respect. Pro or against vaccines? I am vaccinated. I, I don't know about you, right. but I am fully Folks, vaccinated. Hans is vaccinated. I'm fully va I'm I'm honestly, vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. I will tell you all something. In coming into this, one of the things that I discussed was the fact that we would be across a table and we won't have on mask. And one of the reasons why that would be okay and acceptable is because we are both vaccinated. Fully vaxxed, more than six feet, sanitized positions, the new living with the virus. So I just want to say, Hans, as somebody who's a fan of mm -hmm. your work, I've seen you over the years, your vibes up the place. I think that our best days are ahead of us, right? Of course. And mind you, this office, the AG's office, has a huge portfolio on intellectual property, and we're there to support the entertainment industry. I'm a big fan of the promoters and the work that goes on. I want to pay respect to you, mm -hmm. especially to your audience that has walked with you tonight. Yeah. And I'd like to say to Trinidad and Tobago, our best days are ahead of us. We just have to do it together. So here's where I get to say to Trinidad and Tobago, thanks yeah. for tuning in to AGLE for our talks. We're on all platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, live, YouTube, podcasts, etc. We really want to open this platform as we take series one into series two into series three into issues. I'm tired of fighting personalities. Right. I want to bring issues. What do you stand for? 
Are you for or against uh, Tobago autonomy? Yeah. Are you for or against ease of doing business? And why? Bring your points. Let's, exactly. let's talk points. Let's not talk personality. Let's not talk about personal business. Let's not talk about these things that turn into mudsling. And, and essentially what, what it has done for a lot of young people is turn them off of the political landscape. And that's something that we have to acknowledge. And th this is where a forum like this is aiming at changing and so AJ I wanted to say thank you for welcoming me to your office AJ Talks it really was fun um really have to be thankful to, to obviously Minister um and of course Chief Secretary all right so AJ thank you so much for having me thank you very AG much Talks. Trinidad and Tobago this is uh part of our dynamic series of talks we are now getting our grooves together it's been a learning experience we love the issue talks Anytime you tune in here, you're going to hear issues, you're going to hear analysis, you're going to have amazing presenters, we're going to broaden it to guests as we become unleashed um, and are fully vaccinated, we can get live audiences, etc. in. So spread the news, issues are on deck, all of our lives are important. Please go out and get your vaccines and join us as we continue in our series of talks. Check us out online on every platform possible. Big thanks to my crew. And be safe, Trinidad and Tobago. Catch you on the next one. Bye. Hans, thanks a million.